Hello everyone, welcome to your next chapter and lecture. Today we are going to get right into one of the most important concepts of all of coding, which is that of variables. Variables are super, super important, especially for object-oriented coding, because everything that you do is stored in an object that you then run operations on. And how you store things as an object is, how you, is based on how you build and understand variables. So um, it is such an important concept where you're going to find in these classes that they might feel a little bit slow at first, but the pace and the intensity of your learning is going to slowly and gradually increase, especially uh, between chapters. So in this chapter, it might feel a little bit slow and pedantic that I'm going over things maybe two or three times, but it's really important that you get this stuff mastered and down because without having a complete mastership of what variables are and understanding how they work, you're not going to be able to code in any language. So without further ado, what are we going to learn today? I'm going to give you a very, very basic definition or a very uh, intensive definition too of what a variable is. I'm going to show you how to create variables using a specific type of syntax. And then I'm going to uh, show you different, a couple of different data types that are used for variables specifically. Okay, so first let's go through some definitions. A variable, most first and foremost, is really like a container. It's a box that holds some type of information or process. Uh, and imagine that you have hundreds and hundreds of boxes in a warehouse. And if you wanted to call some information or ask your Python, uh, you know, get some number that I, that I extracted uh, a while ago because I want to do some process uh, in this part of my code, uh, you wouldn't be able to find it unless you had uh, all of your boxes labeled. So a variable is like a box that you create, you label the box with some sort of word so that you can access it later, and then what you store in the box is uh, the, the, you know, like an integer or a number or some function or some piece of code. So the variable itself is the box and what you assign into the box is the, the value for that variable, okay? You label your variables by hand, like you do it yourself, you, you give it uh, a variable that is easy to understand and in English. Um, next, what you're gonna need to understand is the concept of an operator. Operators are basically symbols in Python uh, that allow, that Python understands that it has to that it has like a set of processes that it can do with that operator. Uh, you can think of operators as like uh, there are many different types of operators. So for instance, uh, arithmetic operators, the plus sign and the minus sign, these are operators that Python understands and says, oh, okay, I've encountered a plus sign. That means I need to add two things together. Uh, it's very much the same thing uh, in Python as it would be for us interpreting a special symbol, okay? So these operators are kind of preserved and saved within Python. They have specific symbols that do specific tasks that you're gonna learn about uh, as you progress through these chapters. The first operator you're gonna learn is the assignment operator. The assignment operator is the symbol that you use to assign values to your variable containers. So the assignment operator is a single equal sign in this case. And you'll see what the syntax of a, uh, a variable assignment looks like shortly. Next, I'm gonna tell you about two different types of values that you can assign to variables. Now you can assign many different things to variables, but these are the two very basic ones. First, you can assign a number to a variable, and we're calling these this type of number an integer, which is a real number, it doesn't have any decimal points. Uh, an integer can be assigned to a variable um, of any size, so the integer can be 3 trillion, 248 billion, so on and so forth, all the way to the end. Uh, it can also be a negative number, it just can't have those decimal points. So zero is also an integer. Lastly, the other data type we're gonna talk about are strings. Strings are basically alphanumeric characters. So yes, the number one can be a string. Um, a string can be a letter, it can be a word, it can be a sentence, a book, or the entire corpus of written language. It's really just all uh, alphanumeric characters uh, that, that you can represent into a single variable. Okay, so with that, guys, I'm going to uh, 
jump you into a little bit of a syntax section where we're going to uh, go through each part of how to assign a variable uh, by hand one at a time and then we're going to jump into Python and play with this a little more. Okay, so here we are. First thing you're going to notice is this first line here that says first integer equals 21. What we're doing here is we're assigning the number 21 to this thing that we've labeled as first integer. So how this syntax is going is that in order to create a variable, first thing we need to do is label what our variable name is going to be. So in this case, we're naming our variable first integer. You notice that I don't have any numbers at the beginning of this. Um, you cannot assign a variable with numbers at first. So if I said, you know, first integer with a number, uh, that wouldn't work, it would fail. So you have to make sure that your variable names are starting with at least one character. You can have numbers later on in here, like after F, you can do one, two, three, if you want. Um, one other thing to keep in mind is that you can virtually label your variables as anything you want, any word, letter you can name or think of. Um, however, there are a very small handful of words that you cannot use to assign variables. For example, the word true with a capital T-R-U-E uh, will not work because this is a special word that is saved for Python for other things, okay? What you really just need to know is in order to create a variable, it has to be a character, or it has to start with a character, and you can name it anything you want. So this is where the variable declaration occurs. Next thing you notice is that we have this equal sign here. Remember this equal sign is our assignment operator. So now Python knows, oh, okay, so you want to create a variable that is called first integer for me to hold and to store and to do something with later. Okay, I understand that. What do you want me to assign to this thing called first integer? And we say we want to give it the number 21. So what this will end up doing is it assigns the number 21 to this thing called first integer so that if we call our variable first integer later on, it should give us this number 21. Next, you see here, oh, something's a little weird in this one. What are we missing? So this is supposed to be our first string variable. Uh, and what do, you, what do you see that is not here? Why would this fail? It would fail because there's no equal sign. Right, so I'm just gonna put an equal sign here just to show you that like, you know, these are the kinds of things that you're gonna have to consider when you're doing debugging and you'll see like, okay, well, what makes this line different than another line that works? So in this case, with an equal sign here, uh, we are assigning a new variable called, we're labeling a new variable called first string and we're gonna pass to it a string. This string, as you see here, is the, is the it says hello with an exclamation point and a number one. So in order to assign a string as opposed to a number, you have to tell Python that it's gonna be accepting a string. And how you do that is that you tell it or you give it these double quotes wrapped around whatever you want your string to be. Now keep in mind, you can also use single quotes uh, there's no real difference. You can use single or double, but they have to be the same across the entire string. So you can't have single quotes at the beginning and double quotes at the end. That won't work. But you can use single or double quotes and wrap your string information within um, that those quotes. Now you'll notice here that it not only accepts out, accepts alphanumerics, but it accepts special characters like exclamation points. It also accepts spaces, and it also does accept numbers. See here. Uh, we have the number one here, and how this works is that because it knows that everything wrapped around this is a string, that even if numbers are coming in, it should treat these numbers like strings, okay? So the importance of this is that once we have these variables, we can do different things with them. Uh, for instance, you can use an integer to do math. Uh, you could use first integer plus three, and hopefully get an, like 24 coming out. And you can use different operations for strings. So being able to store our information in these things makes it a lot easier for us to then call them later on because sometimes numbers are getting passed in dynamically, sometimes numbers are very large, um, or even strings are very large, and we don't want to have to like retype them every time. So in order to create a variable, we make our label, we label our box, we then 
tell Python we are actually wanting to create an object or create a variable box using this assignment equal sign operator and then we tell it what it needs to pass in. Okay, with this syntax under our belts, let's hop into Python terminal and see how this operates uh, within the actual language itself. Okay, so first and foremost, we're going to need to uh, load a terminal or get a command prompt going so that we can play a little bit in Python. I'm on a Macintosh right now, so what we need to do for a Macintosh is if you go to your little finder magnifying glass there or your applications uh, and just type in terminal and uh, pop up a terminal, uh, terminal shell, what you'll end up getting is something that looks like this. Now I'll just clear that there. You'll know you're, you'll be in something called bash and you know that you're in the right thing if there's a dollar sign uh, next to your little cursor prompt here, okay? If you're on a Windows machine, you're gonna be using something called command prompt and just look at tutorial on how to open that up. It shouldn't be very hard. Go to like your find applications feature and put in command prompt and you shouldn't have that much of an issue. So. In order to get into, uh, so this is Bash. This is kind of like um, Mac, uh, Max, uh, uh, you know, low-level operating system where you do all your kind of hacky stuff, and uh, you know, you see a lot of hackers or like computer people on this kind of screen. Um, my screen will look different than yours. This information I've kind of told my terminal that I want it to give. This is just saying that my username is this. Uh, my computer's name is this, and then I'm in a home direct. I'm in my home directory, which is the, the tilde symbol. It's like my default directory when I load up terminal. Um, in order to get into Python now, all we have to do is type Python. And what you'll see here, if you've installed Python, Mac comes uh, with Python installed. It might not be the 3.6.5, so make sure you go back to chapter one to make sure that you have everything downloaded properly. Uh, and you'll notice here that now we don't have a dollar sign. We have these three arrow pointers, which we call chevrons. And this tells us that we're no longer in bash and uh, having to write bash commands to get, you know, uh, responses in our in our uh, in our terminal, but rather we are in Python and uh, accepting Python commands. So, like our little syntax section, let's first uh, create our our variable. We're going to create our number variable. Remember, first integer. Uh, we first label the variable. We name the box before we put information into the box. We use our assignment operator there. Uh, also, you can do this with like no space between them. It's just easier to read if you space things out properly. And let's assign it that 21. Okay, so first thing you notice is that nothing happened. Like there was no response. It just like accepted the line and said, okay, what's more information? So if we tried to do a first string right now, what would happen? Okay, so this is our first error. What it's saying is that, okay, I tried to do something here. There was, uh, I tried to, you know, make a command, but there was a name error that it doesn't know what first string is. Well, of course it doesn't know what first string is because we haven't assigned something called first string yet. So this is our first error message. Uh, if we try first integer now, do we get the same thing? No, actually it responds to us with what we assigned it. It's, this is Python saying, okay, yeah, I, you called first integer, here's where it is, and here's the number for it. So let's also now try to do that thing where I add a first integer like that, starting with a number, and see if we can assign it something. No, we can't. In this error, it's telling us that it's a syntax error. So we did something wrong with our syntax, and it actually has an error that's pointing to this variable saying, there's an issue with this part of the syntax. You can't always trust these arrows to be accurate to what the error is, but in this case, it was it, it did a good job of trying to guess where the problem lies. Uh, and it's saying that this variable name, the syntax for it is all wrong. Uh, so I'll put that back to first integer. Consequently, if we just call this first integer again, it's still there, it's, a, it's at 21. <coughs> Excuse me. So next, we're going to assign a string. So first, remember that we have to wrap this in quotations in order to do that. <coughs> and here you have it. So that didn't seem to error at all. Let's go first string now. And there it is. So there is in fact a string and we know it's a string because it's wrapped in quotations here. Let's do another string and we use the double quotations and I'm gonna do hello and also include some numbers. 
So now when we call first string, the numbers are indeed in there and they are wrapped in quotations, okay? Uh, so that is how you assign these kind of variables. Let's do one last, uh, one last check. Now remember how I said previously that you can virtually name your variables anything you want except for a small subset of words that Python has preserved, that it uses for its own purposes. One of those words, let's say, is true. Let's try and assign a variable true uh, to the number 41. And it errors out. It says syntax error, can't assign, assign to a keyword. And saying that true is a keyword that Python needs to keep. So you could do T, you could do TRO or TRU. You just can't do some specific words like true and false and a, and a handful of others. Okay, so lastly, what I want to show you is you can also assign a variable with another variable, first integer. And what happens to first string here? There you go. Uh, consequently, if we wanted to assign a string here like hello, that won't work. Why that won't work is because this hasn't been wrapped in quotations, so Python is assuming that hello is some sort of variable that you want to pass into your new variable called first string. Um, but because that isn't there, it's saying, I don't know what I'm doing. I can't, this variable hello doesn't exist. And when you do that, there it is, okay? So last thing I want to show you is the type function. This will this type function is like a command in Python. If you type in type and then have these braces and put in first string here, it's going to tell you what the type of your variable is in case you weren't exactly sure. So you say string and integer, and this is a great way to check to make sure that your variables are what you expect them to be because we can only do certain operations on each of these things. You can't do math on a string, but you can do math on an integer and you can't do something like string slicing or natural language processing on an integer, but you can do it on a string. So uh, being making sure that you know what your types are is very important and how to assign variables, okay? So with that said, let's do a recap guys in this class. What you learned is you learned how to create a variable. You learned that variables are containers that store information. You learned about assi the assignment operator, uh, what strings and integers are, a, type, a data type in Python, or two types of data types in Python. And lastly, you learned how to uh, determine a variable's type in case you forgot or are unsure if it assigned properly.